hit switch number four, which is connected to my pain in the butt Sega Dreamcast, which uh, doesn't like to boot games all of the time, especially when it's been cold or not used for a while. But we're going to see what we get here. Now, the logo for the Dreamcast was it's thinking, and I oftentimes think that it's thinking about whether or not it wants to boot my game or not and as you can see it did not boot the game so we'll power it on and power it off and while it's doing that maybe we'll take a look at the Dreamcast controller which was quite odd at the time very very large um, there's an analog stick a standard control pad four oddly colored buttons and this is where the memory card goes. This is, I think, a start button. Oh, I think I got the boot sound. Uh, the logo is still on the screen. The system is still thinking. Ah, there we go. We have success. Once you see that logo, you know your Dreamcast game has finally booted. Um, oops, I guess uh, now you know that uh, this is a pirated game when you see the Elon logo. Um, uh, the Sega Dreamcast has a lot of fans. Um, there are some good arcade games, uh, such as Crazy Taxi, and this one here, um, which, if it ever comes up, this could be the longest system to actually get into playing a game. But this is 18-wheel American Pro Trucker, also a lot of fun, but for myself, I tend to find that there really aren't too many great uh, by Sega. Dreamcast games out there. So with that being said, we will move along to the uh, second bank of systems here, which are these guys down here, um, starting with the Atari 7800. As you can hear, American Pro Trucker is still going in the background. For the Atari 7800, which is connected to the antenna input on the uh, television, we will switch to channel 3 with the uh, lovely snow. Switch down here to the Atari 7800. It's very dark down here. We hit the power button. Uh-oh. Oh my. Does everybody remember this? Uh-huh. The game that destroyed the industry in 1983. Oh boy, nobody wants to remember that, do they? The Atari 7800 was quite interesting at the time because it could play Atari 2600 games, as you saw, as well as its own dedicated Atari 7800 games. When you powered up, Obviously, this is the arcade classic Galaga. Well, you missed the uh, logo screen, so I'll just quickly cycle that again. That's the screen you see when the 7800 powers into 7800 mode. Um, moving along, we have the FC Twin, which I have previously done a review on. Um, that is the uh, first system connected to my second switch over here. Let's take another look at Galaga because it's a very cool game one of my favorites. Um, make sure button one is pressed. This bank is connected to input three or video three on this particular television. So we'll have to go back down here. The FC Twin, as you already know, plays your 8-bit NES games and your 16-bit SNES games. This is the famous Super Mario All-Stars. Moving along quickly, Hit the uh, second switch on there, which is connected to the Nintendo 64. Um, a very cool system. Uh, the last full-size cartridge-based console. We uh, power that bad boy up. And this is the very, very famous and very, very collectible Super Smash Brothers. Um, the cart's price is continually going up. I happened to find one second hand for about four dollars so you know I had to pick that up. Moving on to the third input which is connected to the Nintendo GameCube and the Sony PlayStation 1.
previously on uh, my other television I had an input issue because I didn't have the Pelican switch box so I bought a multi cable um, and for some reason I didn't decide to uh, split these systems up when I got the switch boxes anyhow um, this is a pretty neat multi cable it has a connection for the GameCube the Sony PlayStation as well as the Microsoft Xbox um, by proxy of that you could also use it to connect your Sony PlayStation 2 or Sony PlayStation 3 as they all use the same uh, style connector for uh, standard definition video uh, and as well as the connector for the GameCube is the same as that used for the Nintendo 64 or the Super Nintendo which I unfortunately do not have. Um, we will power this guy up. Oops. Helps if you hit the uh, proper button. Yeah, Nintendo GameCube is not quite as popular as some of the earlier Nintendo consoles, but it definitely has a follow following and some uh, very cool games in itself, including this one here, which is the very, very beautiful Super Mario uh, Sunshine. Because this video is getting long, we are going to power this guy down and power this guy up, the Sony PlayStation. Ah, yes. Who hasn't seen that screen about half a bazillion times in their lifetime? And of course, more and more copyright and uh, bogus uh, brand screens, which have gotten quite annoying over the years. The famous Squaresoft. This particular game is called Final Fantasy Origins, which are remakes of Final Fantasy 1 and Final Fantasy 2. Uh, very, very cool. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Sony PlayStation 2. Um, this mighty system uh, was one of the most powerful systems ever to come out. Uh, it's still available brand new. This is the uh, slim model. And this gets the special treatment of being connected to the component inputs on the back of my Toshiba television. So if I could figure out where I put the uh, remote control, we will quickly switch over. Uh, Toshiba called it color stream because uh, high definition wasn't quite out at that time. And this is not a high definition or progressive television. Um, it is SD only. So we'll reach down and uh, hit the power button on the PS2. And I'm sure many people have seen this beautiful startup screen over the years. One of the few startup screens that's actually worth uh, watching and looking at. Oh, as if you didn't know you were using a PlayStation 2, Sony thought they needed to remind you that you were playing a PlayStation 2. And Sony Computer Entertainment reminds you again that you were playing a Sony. Ah, the mighty, mighty God of War. This game is probably the most epic game I've ever played in my life. Actually, it looks like I mistakenly uh, put in God of War 2, but that's okay. And there you have it. Uh, there will be more systems coming. I don't know how the heck I'm going to integrate them into all this mess. But as you can see, we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 systems all connected to this one TV. And that is the end of this video.